Now watch and listen as Dr. Ray tells how to stand strong as a parent, how to discipline with calm confidence, and how to keep your standards high. Dr. Ray Garendi. People find out I got 10 kids, I always get this question. All right, now that you got your own kids, what have you learned? I've learned something very critical. I don't take them out in public. You know, <laughs> you take them out in public, invariably they pull some stunt. Just embarrasses the heck out of you. People know you're a shrink, it's worse, because you can almost hear them thinking out loud. Yeah, let's just see what Mr. Psycho Man does about this one. <laughs> I figure it this way, though. We get our vengeance. Oh, it's true, the first nine, ten years of life out in public, they embarrass us. After that, Dad, you embarrass them. I was like, oh, man, come on, Dad, don't, don't wear the pants with the feathers. Dad, <laughs> don't wave at me when people are looking right at us, and I'm not going to pull your finger. I tell folks, you don't want the world to discipline your children. The world doesn't love your children. The world will hurt your children. The world doesn't give mitigating circumstances. Some employer is not going to go, you are just so cranky. Now, did you get a nap today? You go home and I'll cover for you till you're rested. Some judge. Let me see if I got this right. You're the middle child. You have identity problems and you're left-handed? Did you tell that to the prosecutor? We don't try middle children in this court. Dear folks, if we don't discipline for whatever the reason, because we feel guilty, because it's too hard, because we're tired, because we're afraid of being psychologically incorrect, because everybody around us is criticizing us for our standards, if you don't do it for whatever the reason, it will be done. Your child will be disciplined by a judge, a landlord, an army sergeant, a police officer, an employer. I shudder at this next one. A wife. Somebody's going to teach them. <laughs> I am fond of telling folks, discipline without love may be harsh. Love without discipline, child abuse. I have an authority test for you as a parent. To measure your level of authority, calm, confident, resolute authority, here's what I want you to do. Today, tomorrow, if your child does something bad or wrong, and we can still use those words, one time, in a calm tone of voice, I want you to discipline. Example, whatever consequence you see fit. Going to the corner, going to their room, sitting on the steps, writing an essay, a half an hour's worth of extra labor, a letter of apology to his sister that he just mistreated. Whatever consequence you see fit, I want you to simply say, Oxford, please go to the corner, please. Siegfried, that's very nasty. Up to your room. Levy whatever consequence you see fit. An essay, extra chores, loss of a privilege, 25 sentences. You're the parent, you decide. Then, the critical part. I want you to step back and simply observe your child's behavior. How much resistance do you get? Do you get an immediate argument? An hour and a half negotiating session. 42 whys. A fit. A look that says, <laughs> excuse me? What are you talking about? Immediate violent resistance? The reaction you get to your disciplining one time calmly, confidently will tell you how your child perceives you. If you're like most parents, you get some level of resistance. Okay, what do we do when that happens? How do you calm the situation? How do you get your child to perceive mom means what she says? Dad is not negotiating about this. Well, as a therapist for almost 30 years, I've developed a very powerful technique. 
It's called blackout. For absolutely almost all of the parents I've worked with, it is effective. Within a week or two, in the most stubborn cases, it can bring about, say it once, authority. I talk a lot about blackout in this book, Discipline That Lasts a Lifetime. I talk about how you as a parent can have calm, confident, healthy authority. Maybe even authority like your own parents had once. Remember the look? The authority test will teach you where you are in your child's eyes regarding believability. And my book will teach you how to get to the level you'd like. Dr. Ray's books are very valuable. Um, they're, the first one I read was the Back to the Family and you know that that one was really great but the ones I and then the one good discipline great teens I like that one because it's it's letters that people have written in and if I have a question I can kind of look in the the glossary and say okay this is you know somebody else brought this up I'm gonna look it up and see what he said and I just I think it's great to have that right on hand you need to check this guy out you know he he speaks the truth um, he's he's practical and I think I think you can really learn something from him he, he has a broad, a broad appeal. It's, it's very eye-opening, because uh, a lot of the things that he would tell you are, are things that I think has been practiced before by, by, by our parents, without having to have a psychology degree, because it's common sense. And it's, it's very empowering, you know? It makes you feel like, okay, no, I can do this. I can, you know, we laugh, you know, in the evening, and watch the video, and go to bed, and in the morning, I feel like, okay, I can be a little, stronger with my two-year-old when he gets too whiny. Um, I, can, I can be a little more consistent with the discipline and, and, and it, he makes it look fun. I would be in the backyard oblivious to my mother trying to get me in the house for supper when the torrent of words would begin, dear people, cardinal law discipline. You talk two to four hundred words a minute with Gus up to eight hundred, you are throwing ping pong balls at the hull of an aircraft carrier. This is not the organ of discipline. If this is what you use predominantly, close it. It is better to be permissive with your mouth shut than to be permissive with your mouth open. Because if this thing isn't backed up, all that happens is it gets loud and nasty. My mother would start. Raymond Nicholas Garendi. How many times are you going to make me call you buster? You know, buddy boy, you seem to think I talk just to hear myself talk. You seem to think I like the sound of my own voice. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You better listen, and you better listen good, because I'm not going to say it again. I was not put on this earth to serve you. There are five other people in this house who evolve our schedule around yours. Come walk here, pluck your bucket down when you're darn getting ready. Mom, I'm hungry. Feed me now. And I'm going to get up from what I'm doing. you got another thing coming, pal. You mark my words. There's going to be some changes around here, because I am sick and I am tired. I have just about had you up to here. You don't realize how good you got it. You're going to find out. Because I'm going to tell you something else. I am not going to be traipsing around after you. Have you look at me when I talk to you. <laughs> don't you look at me like that. <laughs> I never moved. She wasn't mad enough yet. My mother's philosophy, first 30,000 didn't get you anywhere. Double it. You think you got it tough? I am going to tell you what tough is. When I was a little girl, I used to walk 18 miles, uphill both ways to school in a foot of nuclear waste, with no shoes. We had one pair that glowed for 14 brothers and sisters, and my turn only came around every two weeks and always gave my turn away. That's the kind of girl I was. I got a five o'clock in the morning, two hours before we were even allowed to go to bed. Put a cornflake for breakfast with eight brothers, carried them to school on my back. And you want to know something? I was grateful for what little I had. <laughs> What'd you have, Mom? <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> Weren't you listening? <laughs> but we were happy children. <laughs>